Christmas haven't looked so great in the media lately. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, no, duh. And what do you mean by lately? They've never looked good in the media. Well, that's true. But the coronavirus pandemic has made things a little bit different. So the real question is, do Christians deserve it this time? Let's talk about it. If this is your first time to the channel, hit that sub button and meme team. You guys ready? Then let's go! Unless you've been living on Mars for the past 20 years, Hollywood and the media almost always paint Christians as unintelligent, hateful bigots who seem to believe that the greatest commandment is to make people's lives as miserable as possible. It really doesn't matter what movie or sitcom you're watching. Conservatively speaking, 9 out of 10 times, Christians are painted in a negative light. Now, the worst part about this is, is that the stereotype is the first thing that pops into a lot of people's minds when they hear the word Christian. If you follow current events, then you already know that the social signaling queen Taylor Swift loves to capitalize on these stereotypes from time to time. And if you recall, I made a video in the past about how Taylor Swift made a music video in which she portrayed the Christians in her video as dumb, toothless hicks who can't spell and, of course, behave like the Westboro Baptist Church. Following in the footsteps of Taylor Swift's Christian stereotype, a New York Times journal named Catherine Stewart seemed to share the same understanding of Christians in her recently published article called The Road to Coronavirus Hell Was Paved by Evangelicals. In the article, she actually blames Donald Trump and his movement of right-wing anti-science Christians for paving the way to spread the coronavirus in America. Now, after getting a ton of blowback for such a dumb title, it was changed to The Religious Rights Hostility to Science is Crippling Our Coronavirus Response. Now, doesn't that sound nicer? Now, it's not every day that you can get away with blaming Christians for something like the spread of a global pandemic, or is it? But the important question, of course, is what do the facts say? On a scale from 1 to 10, how much of her accusations is supported by the facts and evidence? Probably the same amount of facts and evidence that support Jesse Smollett's attack. Also in the news, two pastors were recently charged with crimes because they didn't cancel services at their churches. But even when we take these few fringe voices into consideration, we can ask if their resistance to social distancing is a fair representation of the majority of Christians. Well, the recent poll was done gathering people's responses to the coronavirus and asked if they were currently practicing social distancing. And where do you think those anti-science, non-socially distancing Christians landed on that poll? Well, take a look. If you look at the poll, the results show that Christians are actually more likely to social distance themselves than atheists and agnostics, and they're socially distancing about the same amount as everyone else. And if you look at the statistics on the poll, I think it seems that about 10 to 20 percent of all groups just don't want to socially distance and aren't worried about getting sick for whatever reason. So we shouldn't blame any particular group for the spread of the virus. But given these facts, why then is the New York Times publishing an article that makes it seem as if Christians are responsible for the coronavirus hell that we all find ourselves in? You let me know what you think down below in the comments. And lastly, in other news, contrary to what the New York Times article would have you believe, there are plenty of examples of Christians and religious churches who are doing what they can to help people affected by the coronavirus. A friend on Twitter linked me to a few of the articles. But of course, we don't hear much about those in the news. Now, to be clear, I don't at all agree with those who consider Christians cowardly or faithless for closing the church doors. I don't think that they're cowardly for the same reasons I don't think that it's cowardly to lock your doors at night or to look both ways before crossing the street. It's not cowardly or necessarily fearful, it's wisdom. Unfortunately, the biblical support that some of these people use in support of their claims usually comes from quoting a verse from Psalm 91 out of context. Now, I could explain why it's taken out of context in another video if enough people are interested, but even if they disagree with me and take the passage to mean that Christians can't get sick, then they would also have to believe from the same passage that believers can't get attacked by snakes or lions as well. Never mind the fact that the Apostle Paul got bit by a snake and Christians in Africa and elsewhere have been attacked by lions. The Bible and reality both show us that God's people can get sick and die. But we can save that for another time. The question now is, what can we all do to help? Now, if you want to help, I've linked an article down below that lists several ways that you can help those in need. Over the upcoming weeks and months, there will be more and more people who are going to be in need of help. And as Christians, we want to love others by sharing the load with those who are in need. So in a time like this where everyone is affected, no matter what race, location, class, religion, ethnicity, or any other category you can think of, everyone on this planet is going to be affected by the pandemic. If you want to know how I think Christians should be responding to this pandemic, see my recent video linked in the description. And the next time that the media would have you believe that Christians are responsible for coronavirus hell, what are you going to say? Dude, what do you mean?